Hello everyone and welcome to today's video going over the anatomy and the markings on the thoracic cage. So today we're going to be talking about the sternum and then we're going to be talking about the ribs, all the different kinds of ribs that we have, um, the three different parts of the sternum. And also since I forgot to put it in the skeletal system, uh, or I mean not the skeletal, but the skull, talking about the skull or the spine, we need to talk about the hyoid bone as well. A uh, little random bone. So here we're going to go over the thoracic cage. It's the highlight of today of uh, showing how the ribs articulate with the spine. And then there's our little hyoid bone that we're going to throw in at the end. Uh, so here, starting out, let's go over the sternum. So here, uh, you know, the breastbone or the sternum here is the unique parts of it, there are actually three main parts. I know it's hard to see because of kind of there's a little bit of glare from the camera angle, but there is a joint right here and there is a joint right here. The top part of the sternum is called the manubrium. And there are two little notches right here as well. Well, three little notches. The middle notch you can actually feel right there. That one is called the jugular notch. And then in the next video, we're going to be talking about the clavicle and the scapula. Uh, the clavicle actually articulates right here. So this one is called the clavicular notch. So two important notches up there. And that one's also the clavicular notch as well. Uh, and then down here, this is probably the easiest one you could name. This is the body of the sternum. And then down here, this is called the xiphoid process. It's this little point that points down at the base of the sternum. Now there is a little joint here. This is called the xiphosternal joint. Uh, and this one up here is called the sternal angle. I'm not going to write those ones down as well, but there are little uh, connections between these two joints. So the, the sternum itself is a pretty simple bone to understand. Um, so here's just the manubrium, the body, and a xiphoid process. So there are three different parts to the actual sternum. Uh, now I want to go over the rib. Uh, so on the rib, this is so this is the side of the rib that articulates here with the coastal cartilage. So this is hyaline cartilage uh, and allows the stretch of the thoracic cage for deep breathing. As you get older, this can become ossified and make that stretch harder to do, um, which is you, know, you can't breathe as deep. And then down here, you see these one, two, three joined together. Uh, this is actually called the coastal margin. So coastal margin. Um, don't talk about that one as much, but we'll talk about these when we talk about what's a true rib, uh, what's a false rib, and what's a floating rib. We'll, I'll show that when I show it with uh, the skeleton. But now the, the parts of an actual rib. So right here we have the angle of the rib. So how do you orient the rib? Uh, so the rib has a head and then the part that attaches to the coastal cartilage. The part that attaches to the coastal cartilage is not the head. That's just the, so right here we have the shaft of the rib. Down here, the part that actually reaches around and attaches to the vertebrae or articulates to the vertebrae, some ribs have two faucets, um, it's called demi-faucets, attaches to the transverse process of the rib and the body of the rib and then some other, I mean of the vertebrae, and then uh, some other ribs only have one faucet. So these ones right here, uh, this would be the head of the rib, and then right here would be the neck of the rib. And then there's a little groove right in here too. This is called the coastal groove. So one thing I always like to find, so if I hand you a random rib, how do you orient it? Uh, first you want to find the head and the neck. Uh, you can see the little faucets, the articulation sites on the head and the neck or where they connect to the vertebrae. And then you want to find a coastal groove and you know the coastal groove points inferiorly. So that it can give you an idea. There's also a little bump on the side of the coastal groove. Can't really see it on this one here or this one over here, but it's it's there's a tubercle as well. So a little tubercle on the base, and it's called the tubercle of the rib. Uh, but that's the main parts of the rib, not a whole lot to the rib or the sternum, so pretty uh, simple. Now what I wanna do is go over, so right here, this is most of the labeling I need to do on this one, uh, but uh, what I wanna do is go forward here to the actual, so there you can see, there's the tubercle. So there, that little bump on the bottom is another 
and on, right on the other side of that is a little faucet. But so that tubercle is an attachment site for ligaments to hold, help hold the rib to the vertebrae. And then here you can see that coastal groove moving up through. I forgot I, I flipped the rib over for you here. Then so right there would be the head, and then right there is the neck of the rib. So you can see that pretty well. Um, so then I just flip this one over too. Same thing. You can see that little um, tubercle on the bottom, and then. Here, we can actually see how it looks like. Again, this is Dr. Captain Jack Marrow uh, showing us. And if you look uh, deep in there, you can see where the head and neck of the rib articulate back on the vertebrae. I do flip this around. And here you can see the manubrium where the clavicle attaches to the clavicular notch there. And then right there is the jugular notch. This is the body. And then right here is the xiphoid process of the sternum. Um, and then, so one thing I want to show before we move over there, I want to count the ribs. Uh, so ribs one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So one through seven, these are called your true ribs. Then eight, nine, and 10. So eight through 10, these are then your false ribs and then 11 and 12 also label them over here 11 and 12 these are your floating ribs sometimes the false ribs can include 11 and 12 as well um, but here these are the floating these do not attach to any cartilage floating ribs so like the kidney is protected right down in here by those floating ribs. Uh, now, so why are these ones called the false ribs? Because they all connect up to one, so this is a coastal margin here, connect up into one, um, so these three combine. It's not their own coastal cartilage, it's their separate. So they're called the false ribs, one through seven are then the true ribs. So the, you know, the purpose of this is pretty obvious, protecting our lungs and heart, uh, liver, and so forth. Um, so here I just wanted to highlight the rib numbers. So 12 ribs total, one through seven are the true ribs, eight through 10 are the false, and then 11 and 12 down there are the floating ribs. They're not attached to any coastal cartilage there at the end of the, the rib shaft. So then, uh, moving back through this video now, I flip to the back side of Jack here. And you can also see, so the transverse processes are coming out here on the vertebrae, and there you can see the articulations it makes right by that little tubercle. Uh, right down there's the tubercle. You can see a little bump down there, and that's where it articulates. And then um, moving through, the last thing in this video I want to talk about is our little hyoid bone here. Uh, so hyoid bone is really simple. Hyoid bone is the only bone in the body that does not directly articulate with any other bone. Every other bone has a direct articulation. This one is only held in place by ligaments and muscles. And when we get to the muscle system, muscular system will go over all those muscles that attach to it. But just to label a few important parts here, uh, we have this point that comes back in the back. This is called the greater horn. And there's two little points coming up here. When I flip it over, you'll be able to see it a little better. Uh, but these are called the lesser horns. And then the main part here, this is just the body. Again, about the, the easiest bone you can label, but just remember the hyoid bone. It's not. I don't even think he's on Captain Jack. I might have forgot to add him because he's, it doesn't articulate with anything. All right, so just to uh, flip, flip it over here just to show you the other direction. There you can see those lesser horns pointing down there. Then back there are the greater horns. So pretty simple uh, bone, but we will talk about it again because anything that has the word hyo, like hyoglossus, is a muscle that attaches from the hyoid to the tongue. Um, so we'll talk about that very important structure in the neck region. So just to play through this again uh, without stopping, uh, but that's all I have for this video today. In the next video, we're gonna be going over the clavicle and the scapula, another simple one. Then we're going down the arm and forearm and hand, and then we'll get down to the pelvis. So this was the last video for the axial skeleton. The videos after this one will be all, all be appendicular. So the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle are part of the appendicular skeleton. But all the bones we've talked about so far in the last three anatomical videos here are all axial skeleton. So that ends the axial skeleton unit in a way. Uh, but next, we'll be going into the appendicular. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But if not, I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.